Okay guys, so this video is my frantic attempt at getting my uh, Linux Wi-Fi thermostat working. What you see here is actually a backup unit that I bought from someone locally. They upgraded their AC. Thank God they don't have to, you know, continue to use this piece of crap. Um, our thermostat is the exact same model, 10F81. Uh, that had a defective screen and it's very very common on this thermostat so I bought her unit and my hope is actually already as you can see already popped open the back which is not hard it's just secured by a whole bunch of uh, tabs on the side so as as soon as you pop the two sides with a little screwdriver you know you just pop it and it lifts up and for the the low end uh, use a guitar pick and it's very easy to just pry them out and once it pops out uh, this this area gets exposed okay so i think this is the top all right so the two tabs you see here is what that it's what's broken this is the lcd screen on the bottom uh this is for the main display i believe and this is for the touch um so the good news is there are actually replacement touch screens for sale on eBay and Amazon that you can buy um, if your thermostat is still working and you're still able to control your thermostat like on the Wi-Fi. Um, this is your next best hope without spending $1,500 to get the upgrade from Lenox, which is the S30 thermostat. The thermostat itself costs $850 new installation is probably going to be another couple hundred bucks um, you could install that yourself however that requires an additional hub to be installed to convert the 24 volt from the old thermostat power lines into a 12 volt that is used in the s30 thermostat which sucks i don't want to spend that much money i bought this one again used from a local lady that upgraded uh, this cost me about 150 dollars um, i wish i kind of new before i i bought this that i can just replace the screen easily um but this is my last resort i am going to actually just take this off um but the only thing you have to take extreme caution of is the temperature sensor right here or maybe this is a humidity sensor i don't know but when you remove this part you have to be careful not to damage that i was trying to pry it out and i want to just maybe you know glue it back onto the new unit whatever way that I can find is working. Anyway, to take the this whole thing off, you need a special Torx screw. Very, very tiny Torx screw right here. I think those two are the only thing that's holded there. Okay, it's secured by a Torx and I have to find out which size of the Torx. Uh, maybe this one. Mm, that's too small. This is uh, T4 times 50. We might need a T8. Let's try if the T8 is the right size. Nope, T8 is too big. So maybe it's a T5 or T6. Let's see. T3, too small. T6. T6 is too big. So we need a, probably a T5. T10. T7, probably too big. Hopefully this is a T5. Yes, T5 is what's used to remove this screen. And again, this is not my broken thermostat. My broken thermostat just had a blank white screen um, that just uh, stopped working and doesn't register touches. I can still control my thermostat in the app, just not on the screen directly, which is really frustrating, okay? So I got this back up I paid $140 for it the replacement screen is only going for like $70 on Amazon so if the screen is the only thing broke I would highly suggest you guys to try just to replace the screen let's see so now I can just lift this up and it looks like I could just very gently lift this up and just rest the uh, the thing here without having to remove this glue down thermostat okay so that's what I try to do I'm gonna lift this up and just put it on the side okay 
and it's kind of also just slightly glued over there. All right, so that works. I'm gonna leave it to the side. I'm gonna lift the screen out and be really careful with that little wire. The screen is held by just two small tabs, it looks like. So if I just pry this a little bit, it should pop out. Let's see. I don't want to use too much force. This is already like super old. Okay, we're almost there. And again, the only thing I want on this unit is the screen itself, okay? So if I do get the screen uh, working on the, um, on my old thermostat, I might just buy a, a screen replacement for this one and then just resell this one. Um, since the screen is the only thing I need. Let's see, take a look. All right, so this is the screen that's working. If we take a look at the actual replacement screen, this is made by a Shanghai company. It's called Shanghai Tianma. It's like uh, um, the sky horse, whatever, uh, in terms of Chinese. So this is the OEM replacement screen. If you do see one for sale, this one should work. Okay, so that's the only thing you need to replace, hopefully. So I'm gonna go grab my broken thermostat and I'm gonna pry it open, show it on the video with you guys. And again, just be really careful saving this um, temperature sensor so you don't damage it. I'm gonna put it back and just leave it aside till I get a replacement screen for this one. And then I'm gonna try to sell this one, okay. So this one has done its job. I took the screen out. Now I'm gonna grab my thermostat and put the screen on there okay so i'll be back all right and this is my unit um, and again the wi-fi works perfectly so i know the circuit board is working fine the only thing that's not working is the uh, the screen so let's just go ahead and do a screen replacement from start to finish um, i showed you guys how to remove the screen over here which is pretty easy and now we're gonna replace the screen okay and we're gonna do it one more time and i'm gonna put the screws also on the side this is from the old parts. Now, to pry this open, it's very easy. Again, remember you need a T5 screw, okay? This is a Torx T5 screw. I post some links on Amazon on where to get it. And this is my thermostat with working circuit board but broken screen. All you have to do, pop the two sides open, just gently. It's like really brittle now. Since it's so old, oh, yeah, it's like really old and falling apart. Um, hopefully, so it works a little bit. And I don't, I don't freaking care because if this fails, I just have to go pay eight hundred some dollars and get a. Um, get a S30 thermostat replacement. And that will be my ultimate solution for this problem. Very, very brittle. Okay, very, very brittle. My unit is definitely in worse condition than her unit. You can see a lot of plastic already like flying around, which is not a good sign. Again, pry it open and use a guitar pick to continue. Okay. And the top, we're gonna probably do the same thing. Let's see, if we pried open everything. All right, let's see what the top looks like. The top should actually just fall off, hopefully. Let's see. And again, prying everything using a guitar pick. All those you can get on Amazon. All right, so actually let's just do a quick comparison of her board. Her board had an older firmware. Mine had a newer firmware, and as you can see, it actually also looks different. Um, 
this one is older and this one is newer you can see the capacitors are actually different uh, in terms of the layout so the um, in the old one they use the three capacitors 220 whatever and the new one only two capacitors interesting the the board and the Wi-Fi this one had the new uh, Wi-Fi module. This one had the old Wi-Fi module. Okay, so this is definitely older. All right, and another thing that we have to take note is I don't know what this is. Okay, the old one doesn't have it. The new, the new, like mine does have it. This looks like the Wi-Fi module's uh, antenna. So this one didn't have a antenna, but this one did. The new one did. All right, we have to be very careful knowing that it's got an antenna um, in there, okay? And, but I think uh, we should be able to pry it open and get the LCD replaced. The LCD is, looks to be almost the same, hopefully, hopefully. Fingers crossed, never know. If this breaks, again, uh, just be careful, have full confidence in yourself before you do this. Otherwise, uh, just be prepared to get a new thermostat, okay? So again, the same screw over here, T5. And the screw is already a little stripped. The unit has been um, working for about seven years, I would say. Yeah, about seven years. And now this is popped open. Oh, uh, I didn't show you guys how to remove the tabs. The tabs, you just push this down. and you should be able to take it out. But I don't know why this fall off. I think it's also because it's aged so much that the, even the tab is like failing. Okay, I kind of figured why. The tab looks a little damaged. That's probably why right there. It stopped working, right? So this area gets pinched and damaged. Um, maybe that's why. I don't really know. Over here, same thing. You push it down and you take it out. Okay, all right. So that's that's a that's a tab. And uh, wow, I really don't know what happened here. I did not mean to pull this whole thing out. Okay, might still work. I just have to manually push it in since it's God. All right, leave it aside and we'll lift this and see whether I can remove and replace. Crap, guess what? Another one of those broke. Thing just keeps falling apart. Okay. All right. So they did add a extra antenna to here to boost the signal. Um, and this is a screen again I'm going to everything is literally falling apart I'm going to just lift this up as carefully as I can and drop the other this, <laughs> it's falling apart drop the other screen in here Comparing the screen, okay, comparing the screen. Now, this board is like really, really old. It's falling apart. Comparing the screen, it does look like they're very similar. 800 by 400 resolution screen, I think. Yeah. So let's put this screen here. 
and this is my last resort in resurrecting this and make it work just a little bit longer now I they're really falling apart well one tab still works so thank God um, and are very carefully put this back in here actually the replacement part is done right so we just need to uh, make sure things situates in here nicely hopefully uh, which I doubt it's going to be all right and I'm gonna secure that two screws right there if it goes back in there <laughs> who knows all right if not I'm just gonna use some glue to actually glue it on there so it doesn't really move as much and then just use it as is okay went down put another one in here Bear with me as I'm sweating in my room without AC. And so we we successfully replaced the screen like fairly quickly, as long as you know how to pry it open. But if your panel is like yellowed, it's pretty much um, very, very brittle. So you might have to resort to some glue to glue some things back on there. All right. so. Yeah, it kind of doesn't move and all the antenna the wires are still intact and I'm going to just carefully put those wires back on there like push it back in there and tighten it So wires in place and this one again I don't have the thing on the bottom so you need this little tab I'm just gonna put it on the bottom and get ready to push it in there and lock it but obviously as you can see it's already half broken due to aging of the plastic looks about right and obviously you have to align it pretty nicely but in terms of direction yeah hard to see and hard to do Push it in and I'm going to just apply some pressure kind of fixate it right there well it kind of works right um, next step I need to make sure this is uh, actually my cover yep so this is the cover um, yeah everything's already back in here as you can see some tabs are very brittle and already broke but the majority part of the tab is still holding it in place. Fingers crossed, let's push it back in here and see what happens. All right. So the screen still kind of works. Now, yeah, falling apart. Now I'm going to the thermostat. I'm gonna just forcibly push this in there and hopefully, hopefully the screen would work. Okay, falling apart. All right, so look at this white area. Like it's all like bits and pieces. Obviously, some bits actually got onto the screen right there. You see, 
So I gotta, wow, I gotta pry it open again. My God. This time it's definitely gonna fall apart. And I don't know where that little tab came from. It's like a very weird tab over there from something that's falling. Let's see. This thing is like waiting to fail catastrophically. All right, one more time. I'm going to put everything back on there in hope it would work. Oh, and look at this. This is already loosened, so it's not properly situated in there. I'm going to try to okay, put some pressure on there. Okay, now it looks like it's working fine. And so for the touch, I'm going to try it one more time. Push it in a little more. All right, that's it. Last try. If the screen turns on, then we fix the issue. If not, I'm calling my AC company and uh, we just have to get a replacement. So let's go upstairs, check to see if the LCD would actually turn on. All right, so we're at our AC unit. Again, this thing is falling apart as well. All the tabs are pretty much all broken. So what I am going to do is I'm gonna find some glue to actually put on back of there once the test is complete, just to make sure it doesn't fall off, you know, just, you know, sitting here, right? So let's see. Hmm. Okay, now looking at this screen, I am thinking it's not the screen, but the actual capacitor that actually is, is bad because the screen is fine. Um, and this is a replacement screen. So I can confirm that the capacitor, one of the capacitor that controls the screen actually went bad. Again, you can kind of see some of the display over here. Now, this is a good working screen, okay? The next thing to do is I would not advise you to go buy a replacement screen because the capacitor on the circuit board is broken. You have to replace that, which is, again, going to be a harder task than most people think, right? Just uh, upgrade to the S30 and... Uh, I think there are tutorials online on how to do that. But for us, I think we're gonna just chug it down, spend the money and grab an updated um, screen and call it a day. For now, we're gonna have to deal with this broken capacitor for the display and just use Wi-Fi to control the thermostat. So at least we tried, right? And hopefully you guys also learned something. If you see your screen like this, do not. Do not go buy a replacement screen. All right, so after a couple hours of tinkering, I was finally able to actually fix this 10F81 thermostat and make the screen working again. And uh, so a couple of tips that are, I think are actually quite important for the takeaways for you guys, if you're doing the same project, that is if your screen is white color or washed out no display like i showed in the earlier video when i replaced the screen on my circuit board and the screen is still blank so that means your capacitor needs to be replaced on your circuit board so 
in the next section of the video, I'm actually going to uh, order the capacitor that I talked about in hope to fix my existing broken uh, thermostat. So this one is my replacement model that I bought used from the lady just today, like earlier this afternoon. This model worked great. I have to do some tinkering to the software and the firmware uh, in terms of getting this board to work with my system. And I'm also gonna show you guys in the next section or the later section of this video. So you know exactly how to fix the problem uh, when it comes to fixing your own thermostat. And I think it's gonna work probably 90 to 95% of the time uh, based on my method. And I bought this thermostat from dad uncompatible to fully working um, after tinkering around. So stay tuned. Next section, we are going to try to replace the capacitor on my broken thermostat and see if that's going to work. All right, so we have the, the broken thermostat that I just replaced the capacitor. And I have a, a, like a, a spare unit that I found and replaced and kind of fixed our thermostat. Um, so I'm gonna just unplug this one that I fixed. We're gonna plug the one that with a broken screen on there and try to see what is gonna happen with the screen. All right, I pulled my good working panel off. We're gonna plug this broken panel on there with the replaced the small capacitor. We're gonna see what's going on. Nothing is happening, all right? So the screen is still broken, right? Capacitor is not the issue. The touch screen is also not the issue. And I'm thinking this issue is probably too deep down that it just cannot be fixed. If you have this wide screen, you are pretty much screwed. Just go ahead and find a replacement unit that still works and that will be your best hope, okay? Again, not fixable. The screen itself is good, but the circuit board is broken. Um, you won't be able to fix it with replacing capacitors. That's what I want to let you guys know out of this, uh, this message or this video. The 10F81, if you see this widescreen, you are screwed, get a new replacement one, or just upgrade to the S30 iComfort. Um, that will be your last resort. All right. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Unfortunately, I was not able to solve this issue that I thought I might be able to solve, but at least you guys know, just don't waste your time. Go get a replacement unit that still works and uh, you know, fingers crossed, or just upgrade to the S30 and spend that, uh, you know, a thousand or more dollars. But that's pretty much it, your only options. All right, thanks guys. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.